draw some art on this uh, model that we have. I wonder if Braves is going to get first pick. That's going to be my call. And now, I actually think the next ding. one might be Callista to come through as well on the same time here. Now, look into your crystal ball and tell me what comes next as that Nautilus appears to be locked in, and it has been. Exactly. So there's two ways you can go about this now. You can look to secure strong solo laners when a Seer and Galio is still up, or you can look to match the bot lane that you know that you're going to get banned out. So the likes of Misfortune, the likes of Aphelios is still up there. And Raze is also one of these players that have been playing this Aphelios in the past. If you decide to lock in the Nautilus, it passes super well into what Fnatic wants to do is shut you down. And even paired up with the Aphelios, you can actually play aggressive with it. If you hit a Winter's Bite, there's a Saffron Q on the Aphelios. Yeah. You just insta stack up that stun and you kind of get a kill lane going for you as well. So I'd actually love to see them just try and match it down there because it gives you something to do in the early game, but you also have this scaling aspect so you don't have to be He's too stressed about making the early game work for you. Man, wouldn't that be crazy to watch Ray's taking an upset? And I'd love it. Hopefully working out. A couple seconds left. Yeah. Yes. It's going to go Please. the other direction. Why do you like Tristana? So I really feel like Tristana is one of these champions that I hope would be played more and that we would see more going into this tournament. I know some of the Eastern teams actually still rate this champion very much, but the Q buff she had where 10% extra attack speed was added from rank one just really adds a lot to the firepower. Usually you would not want to see it paired up with a Braum, you want something that's a bit more kill heavy, but either way, I'm happy to see it. And I think this is actually a really underrated pick right now that I believe we'll see more of. Well, fantastic lock in there. And the first phase of picks will close out with Victor. That is a humanoid special. Extreme amount of experience over the past few years. The knob well, and away from Tapoon. He's 9 0 on their champion this summer, so another great ban away. How do you see these drops now starting to shape up? Because we've obviously got that Graves locked in. And uh, we're looking now for Resort's jungler in this next phase. Yeah, how many champions do you think you can say for Chief that they have 100% win rate? A lot. They having dropped one a game lot. over Correct. the season. It counts. It counts. I mean, when they, what was it? The 19 and 1, 20 and 1 this summer? I don't the exact number of wins. They only dropped that one game in finals. Yeah. You have so. to call me out in the stats, don't you? I, I don't? really. I mean, I, it's your thing, right? So. Cool, you know I love my quick stats, dude. And I love that you're supporting me and in, 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 you know, activating it. Yeah. Because it's often the brawl. It's like frenemies. I love, I love the thing we got going here, Trevor, as well. So, all right, going back into the drafts as well, heading into the second ban rotation, you can clearly see a lot of top laners are getting taken away here. And I'm wondering really what the idea is for banning in terms of what they want to approach here, because they're banning away good blind flakes right now, which kind of indicates that you're looking for a jungle on four anyway, you know you're playing into the graves, and then you'll counter pick on five instead. So Fnatic right here, they're just trying to take away all the good stuff you can. Having Trundle still up, I honestly wouldn't see that as a bad thing. And yes, that's another one I would have loved to see. I so I had a bad read. My crystal ball, I put Maokai to be one of the most played champions. I really think that he's in a great spot right now. You're able to flex him as well if you want to. And having both Sejuani banned away, having both or and the Orn taken away, there's not a lot of tags you can default to from the side of Chief now. Now, to clarify, when you said a bad read, we talked a little bit earlier about how Maokai could have been a high priority. We didn't see it for the first four games. Let's see whether or not Wanda can pop off on this pick, show off the capabilities of the tree, and let's see how it adapts over the course of the next few days. The answer from Chiefs. Swain is secured, and we're looking for the last option here to run into this point. It will also allow Razork the ability to you know, pick something that can potentially slow or stop this Gwen Swain combo. I hope we get the funny interaction there. It's with Gwen and Maokai. I won't reveal to you what it is, but if we see it in game, I'll, well, I'll definitely call it out at the same time. Uh, and this is where you kind of can keep the flex going now. Rasok, if he actually has been practicing that Maokai jungle, or if this was a takeaway where they just wanted Vunda on a facilitator on the top side, seeing as you already have a bot laner in the Callista, you know you want to play for. So not a lot of options left after so many champions spend away. And Lee Sin did receive a couple buffs. It's only not the highest win rate just yet. But Rasok, nonetheless, is going to be busting it out. Okay, zoom out. When we look at these two compositions, how do they want to win the game? Well, from the side over of Chiefs, like once again, you still have some good team fighting you can have over in the late mid to late game. You have good side lane presence as well with the, with the Gwen. Uh, and as they already mentioned on this, Tapoon really loves to be on champion and a carry potential. Agency, he loved going for solo kills as well. And seeing Tally on a Swain just makes it easy. You're playing into the Victor, they're set up as well if Graves decides to come around. On the other side from Fnatic, it's quite clear, right? You have your front line in Wunder, you have two carries to play for in the back line, and you have Rasok and Rox who's got playmaking potential. 
crucial to set up the carry. It's very clear. I think Chief is in a position where they got good disengage, and they want to play out where they get engaged on, they disengage it, and then they kind of find their moment to get back into the fight. Do you think this composition will unlock Arthur to dominate on the international stage in a similar or comparable way what he's done in the LCO. I think it's not fully that. I think they could have gone harder in it, and there was also easier in the past for them to do it, because quite often, Chief would be the team that would pick the Lucian Nami, and then all of a sudden, you would just have your bot lane be able to move all the time. Or they would be the one with the Kalista, and they could move all the time. You don't have the same kind of things where you're able to move instantly, but he's playing the Graves, and he's playing into Lee Sin. That's still very good for the side of Graves, and he's great in this meta right now, as we've already seen so far in the tournament. Oh, man, I'm very interested to see how well Chiefs will perform as well as how does Rux, the man on your screen, as well as Fnatic look in their second game. EU's already 3-0, and oh, looking to make it 4, and the Chiefs on the LCO are looking to shut them down. I think we should make it 3-1. and one. I'm, I'm down for Chiefs here to take this one. Ooh, I'm really feeling this region. Three, I mean, EU under those. Hold the thought, hold the thought, because if you're at home, make sure to grab the exclusive Very NASA's Much Wow emote from Prime Gaming by connecting your League of Legends account with your Prime account. I call NASA Susan. Do you know why? Because it's it's oh, it's backwards. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the oldies will know it. I feel like the newbies will know it too. It, it, it's very simple up there. Good boy. Can you tell I'm excited to be back at Worlds? I mean, I've been I've been telling I've been seeing that the entire day. No, that's a lie. I've been seeing that ever since we got here. For the record, me and Trevor we're extremely jet like We really haven't gotten to the point yet where we're over it yet. So if we go a little off the rails into this. Bear with us. Um, it's been a long day. As for you, so for us. So uh, we're looking forward to this one. Can I give you a quick set you're going to like? Yeah, I promise. Yeah. The last time that Resort played Lee Sin was in the 2022 Spring Playoffs. All time, he's got a 60% win loss on the Champions. So we've not seen it this summer. And I'm interested to see how well Resort is going to match up here against Arthur because we've talked so much about the uh, 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 impact that Arthur has for Chiefs. And we can see both junglers starting in the top half of the map. Tapoon will be a little bit late to lane there. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's interesting to see how they'll be enabled by the laners. I mean, more so from the side of Chiefs, because Rasok, he will have times where lanes will move. But on the Lee Sin, you quite often look to get that level six and then see if you can start to commit some plays, especially when you're playing into the graves. You don't really win those skirmishes if they suddenly meet up. So I think from the side of Arthur, if he can mess around with Rasok as much as possible, pre-6. That's great. And honestly, another thing I'm always almost willing to give JoJo down here a little eagle to a bonus point. The fact that we have this. This is cool. I like this. I love the tri-lane camera. We saw the engage there from Rux getting that dredge line onto Aladoric and getting a little bit of chip damage. Humanoid and Wonder on the other hand, they've been bullied and pushed back once again. Rux and Upset going in. The exhaust and the cleanse popped. Aladoric forced to flash to safety. The rain won't pick up the kill, but two summoners for two. And up in the top lane, Wonder's being bullied by the Snip Snip. Yeah, so you can definitely see who's the weak side and who's the strong side here from both sides of the team. And actually, Wonder being this low, normally it would be quite dangerous, but because Arthur has decided to path down towards the bot side, he won't really be in a position where you're looking for a dive, right? And another thing you asked me about was like, how is Arthur going to get enabled by the laners? I think you can already see it now. Bot lane is completely pushed in, which actually allows Rasok to get a bit aggressive. See if he can get some intel. He's been found out. He's been pinged. And he'll see Arthur now as well. Yeah, Arthur's going to be able to just dash over the wall. Tally was running a little low, about 60% mm -hmm. HP before he got chunked out there. And... I just turned away for a second. Did Razzle flash over the wall? Yes, yeah, so he definitely did. And that's just a wave bouncing back from the bottom side. He already used his Vortar, but just like that, forced to flash out. It's okay. He won't need it until he's level six. It's fine. But it does create a point of attack, to be serious, from the side of Chiefs. Yeah, of course, whether or not um, Razzle continues to play that invade style. It's only three minutes in. Took a quick glimpse, by the way, at the top lane. Wonder on this Maokai. Down 11 CS. He's going to need to farm up underneath that tower as best as he can. Well, That's you, the you comfort from the Maokai. Yeah. That is, that, like, you, you just want to chill up there. You never want to be forward in lane. If your enemy keeps pushing in, you're happy about it. You need a few points in the queue, you hit that level 6. It's really in the team fights where you start to yeah. become that menace that you fear. So all Wanda has to do, it's so pressure. If his teammates can drop a defensive ward across river every now and then, just so they know if Arthur's looking for a dive, that would be great for him. Rocks oh. down towards the bot side, trying to freeze the wave outside of the turret, make sure Opset can come back, pick up some gold and minions pushing in. You can already see the inventory um, looking good for Opset, who got to have an early reset. Yeah, of course, they're in the mid lane, taking a look at the different CS numbers. Humanoids plus 10 for now. 
despite the fact that Tally was pushing into him significantly. Humanoid was doing a very good job of picking up those creeps underneath. The rocket jump away to safety. And it's been a fair amount of, you know, pushing back and forth here. As all of a sudden, Humanoid set up. Pull backwards. Arthur stepped in. Here comes Razork from the side. Humanoid's held onto that flash and is literally able just to walk away. Not enough damage from either, and a fight against the minions, so hard at Grave. Definitely, but you see the setup that works there with the Swain as well. It's super easy to land and never move, and also at the same time, at least one Dark Harvest stack was picked up by Arthur, which of course will exponentially grow over the course of the game. We talked about wards to have intel for Wunder, and really good wards coming out here from Rasog as well when he just had the time. They now get the intel. On the other side of Chiefs, the wards are there, but they're more in the river, so they're a bit more neutral, and you won't always have the same intel that Fnatic, for example, gets to work with now. Yeah, there we go. Humanoid teleports there back into that middle lane. And we're sitting at about five minutes in. Chiefs haven't been able to find any of those opportunities that we've come to know from the LCO. Not without trying, it must be said. Keeping my eyes on Arthur once again. He's back to wait. Step back into his jungle. He's going to clear out those chickens. This time, Rux is already stepping forward. It feels like a fair amount of Fnatic time spent in like a minute or two, just stepping in, checking out the uh, Raptor camp, making sure they see the timers. Maybe keeping a bit of an eye on Arthur, respecting the impact he's had. Oh, you most definitely have to. Aladoric goes. He caught out. Yes, indeed. Gets booped on the head. My Nautilus continues to get chunked down and not going to chase further. So the Empire put some damage down, but there's just not enough burst from Azork this early on. And both teams, you know, just fishing, trying to force an error, not being able to complete it. Yeah, the boop's not really doing that big of a nope, damage. Nope, it, it, it never it. does. Yeah. It never does. It's not really that big hammer you're looking for, or anchor rad to get. It's more like the one that squishy makes squishy noises at this point in the game when, yes. you, when you finally hit it. It's the squeaky children's <laughs> yeah, exactly. toys. <laughs> exactly. Now, both junglers are down on the bot side, so depending on how they really communicate this one to play out with, we could see a play coming through. And yeah, Arthur is in a position to be in a counter game position. Rux is going to be so happy that Drench Line didn't yeah. connect. I don't know if he saw Arthur or not. Maybe just as he stepped forward. The rocket jump got raised away to safety. And that top lane CS difference is now becoming less and less significant. Humanoids thrown down the Chaos Storm, continues to tick away, forces the flash. He's still got a significant lead in the middle lane and going to be very, very happy with that trade. Humanoid today on this Victor has really been showing up. And I think that's great to see when he's had so much criticism over the course of playoff raise. Three, three stunned up. Upset's able to escape for now. Still got flash, still got cleanse. Resort, Sonic Wave, as well as the resonating strike. And dashes back to upset, pops the shield down. Don't want to step into that end of the line. So much damage can come out. Yeah, we talked about the action that might happen on the bot side. This matchup as well is just so explosive if it ever really connects here. Ooh, good gravity feel as well from Humanoid. Ooh, use the Sith Lightning. Tally's not going to be able to do more than that. But there's a lot of trading this game, Gorborg. Um, almost every single lane, and once again, we take a look top. One's going to use that Bramble Smash. <laughs> uh, are you a little bit surprised by this in terms of just how much poking and trading there has been? No, or expected? I'm really not. And, I, and once again, it, it kind of speaks to how Chief is looking to be aggressive as well. Fnatic was one of the most early game driven team in terms of a gold lead they acquired for themselves for 14 minutes. But Chief is looking to be an explosive team as well at the same time. They can really not be underestimated. So I do like to see that both junglers are mimicking each other. They're looking for the same place. They're really not just looking to back down in this game. No, they're not. I mean, I want to put some numbers to this again, actual meaningful ones, so I don't think I can call them quick stats. We'll get to that in a second, actually, because Resorc, Kenny Taxi over W to Wonder, and the Q and the Minions he's holding on to it. There's no support for Chiefs from the river just yet, but there is a ping there, so a little bit aware. So you're aware Gwen can be immune, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so if you put down the immune field and Wonder's trying to W, if you get out of range, the W just cancels from Maokai. So it's one of those things where it's super slippery locking yeah. this champion down. Even it feels bad as Maokai and Vi as well for that matter. So, so difficult. And eight minutes in, and it looks like a little bit of shenanigans around the Rift Herald. But I mean, like, else, you know, four, four Chiefs, 64% of the games, they get first blood. 64% of the games, they get first dragon. First tower in 80%. Their gold difference at 14 minutes is usually 3,000 gold. And right now, they're trailing Fnatic at nine minutes. The only reason we keep talking and highlighting this is the first time seeing them on stage, want to draw some comparisons to how they perform regionally. And also, I think I want to give some credit here to Fnatic. They paid a lot of attention to Arthur. They've spent a fair amount of time in that bottom oh, quadrant yeah. of the jungle and made sure that 
they couldn't be surprised by him. Oh, but you definitely have to. And now with the movements coming through as well, no AD carries have moved up, but there's four members trying to get their way into the Rift L. Humanoid is a little late to the play coming into this one. He's got better itemization though than Tally. And Insect comes through. So nicely done. Kick, flash, Tally knocked backwards. Demon flares up. Humanoid arrives to the fray. First blood secured by Fnatic. The Rift L is being secured down to 1300. Resort may be able to steal. No, little too late. Chiefs secure that one. So potential money to be earned if they can get a play game. That's the thing. That can still be worth for Chiefs yeah. in the regard that they can use the Rift Tail to really pick up a turret if they find the correct play for it. But great way for Rassok to just jump over. It doesn't even have to connect the Sonic Wave on Tally itself. Just find a way to taxi to the minion. No flash from earlier, which once again, good credit to Humanoid, who's able to pass that by himself in an isolated matchup. And of course, Humanoid did need a flash for that. He needed to get the Death Ray out. There wasn't enough damage between Resork and Rux to pick up the kill without him getting there. Resork was running a little bit low. And ultimately, Fnatic had that under control. First blood secured, 1300 gold up. We're 10 minutes in. And Fnatic are feeling very comfortable with this opening phase. I do want to again just draw attention. Look at that mid lane difference. Plus 36 CS and the kill to Humanoid. The goal difference is gigantic at the moment. It definitely is, but it was always going to be like that. Once again, Tally, he's not so much an individual yeah. like man coming through to really gap you in the mid lane. He's there to assist his teammates instead. He's the facilitator of this roster that allows players like Arthur to get aggressive. But I will say though, so far in this game, a lot of it is going to come down to control as you're mentioning it. And moving into this, well, 10 minute mark with Umbral Glaive being finished from Arthur, they're actually going to be in a position to take really good control of the map just due to the fact that you're playing against the Lee Sin, which means that the enemy jungler won't take Sweeper. Because of that, they're not going to be able to take care of all the wards that a jungler you usually would. And that may also be a reason that Arthur can sneak his way into here. Remember, he's got Umbral Glaive, so if that's not pop, he knows he's not on Vision. Then Arthur actually help his team. He's got that collateral damage unlocked. Looking at the minimap here, mid lane is pushed into Tally, so Humanoid can respond. Rizok started this dragon off, but upset and Rux under a little bit of pressure here, so not able to find the opportunity. Once again, Tally forced away, pushed out of lane by Humanoid, who's having a stellar opening to Worlds. Not only is he having a great day, just Reminder here, Fnatic playing with that sub there in the 10th world appearance. Rocks. Highest of any organization, and now they can try looking to kill that sub. He's gonna be able to get pulled back, chucked back in by Callista, exhausted down, Buster shot to buy some time. Ray stays alive, but his flash and his cleanse heal rather is already broken. First kill on the board, four chiefs and his Arthur, that picks it up. Humanoid's got a Chaos Storm available. Humanoid. Death Ray out, looking for that shot. There's another kill secured by Fnatic. Chaos Storm ticking, ticking, but will not be able to chase further. And that's the moving you get from the mid lane that allows you to get so aggressive down in the bot side. It was a good initial response from Arthur as well, finding the kill. But then again, the counter response coming through from Fnatic is great. Tally at least in that mid lane, will be pushing in a wave. He will be getting some extra breathing room for himself, even if, if he even can get a plate here, but he's going to decide to move up towards the top side instead to buy some pressure for Tupoon. And this is a little bit of what we have seen from Fnatic this summer. Um, they have not prioritized the Rift Herald at all. Rezork started that dragon, which was kind of how the shenanigans played out before the engage on the bottom lane. But Fnatic have prioritized dragon over the Herald all season long. You'll see on the minimap there, Rezork looking to go behind the pit before Rux engages. Yeah, but this is why you pick the Grom as well, right? Yeah. If you ever see Rux get aggressive, you hit him with that Winter's Bite, and you get aggressive yourself there. Good counter response coming through, but I think it's a really crucial Buster shot that comes out of Raze. He hits two people with this one, and Rasok just gets isolated. He goes in for a ward up to try and secure a kill, but no kick is available any longer, and he's just there to be left out to dry. And Humanoid now finding himself one versus three, goes down to Tally and Arthur, comes back with a counter response from Chief. Exceptional play-by-play, -play, young man. No flash of no Chaos Storm, so the Chiefs have found their bite. They've got their second kill. Their goal difference is literally insignificant at 500 right now. And Shelly's just been popped, gonna start to charge up that boot. This is the Empire will spot out Resort, get the charge, get the gold before those plates drop. And now it is in it doesn't matter, that yes. goal difference. And <laughs> to nobody's surprise, Arthur 2 0 on the team. Yeah, definitely. And th this is the guy you need to be wary of every time as well. Like, you need to respect this guy throughout the entire tournament. My goal after today's broadcast is next time there's a Twitter poll, it's more than 15% that Chiefs get. Like, <laughs> get them up to at least 20. Goolbog, that's not up to you, my friend. It's yes. going to be up to Raze, it's going to be up to Chiefs, it's going to be up to them putting up a fight. Right now, Raze is getting chunked on and rendered down. Very well played there by Fnatic. I'm willing to settle on 90. Okay. <laughs> Plus 4%. That's what we're looking at. 
Well, then as 30... long as the stonks are rising, I'm happy. But that, that, that is more than a 30% increase on the original I mean, percentage points. I'd believe you. Like, math is really not my I actually think my math is wrong, but it sounded good. I delivered yeah, it. So I mean, I confidence. believe you. I believe you. Keep it coming. Look at this, by the way. Seven turret plates secured, 1,100 gold here from Chiefs. We saw the amount of pressure Wonder was under. We've not looked top lane in a little while. The CS is dead even. And this is exactly what a Maokai wants to do. There's no surprises. You were excited to see a pick. We didn't really care about it in the laning phase. But where do you want to see Wanda starting to get involved? They've got that TP up, you know, starting to look at the first half falling not too soon. That's the neat part. You don't really have, have to care about him too much. Yeah. He's just kind of vibing up there. He's just vibing. <laughs> and that's what you want. Like, he's never going to die. He's just chilling. And once you finally get your Fimble Winter as well, you get all the shielding coming through, you have your passive to heal you up. It's going to be great. Just wait for it. I don't have to explain myself. Wanda will do the work later. Now, Moving on to the neutral objectives. Uh, Cloud Drake does go down onto Cheats. It's a late one on that. 14 yeah. minutes, almost 15 minutes being picked in. So if we do go to that late game and they want to keep the stacking going, we might be here for a while. Nobody was allowed to leave lane. I mean, it's just they're constantly punching and jabbing one another. So there was no real opportunity for that to work out. But this is a good sign for Chiefs. I mean, the first 10 minutes started to feel like Fnatic had answers. But after they engage bottom, after picking up a couple of kills, the Rift Herald, the Dragon, Chiefs are now setting up for potential gang flashes available for both Rux and Upset. Yeah, here we go. And I just want to say, play doesn't work out. But look at the vision. Oh, oh okay, that's the re-engage. Flash, dredge line, teleport coming as well. Here comes Wanda, the twisted advance forward. Where's the nature's grass? The trees start rolling. That's a root in place of one. Aladarik's going away for two. One, two kills for Fnatic as Aladarik sports some time and the death rate takes him down. There's one reply from Tapoon. Take it, take it, take it. Lee Syndrome not followed by Resort despite landing the Q. Three kills to Fnatic. Yeah, and they get the turret in bot lane as well. It's going to be the first one at that, despite not having that Rift Tail, but it just goes down to the lane prowess between Brox and Opset. And once again, huge credit to Rox again. Coming in as support, playing ERLs, being an eighth place team in the Super League. A humanoid finding Tally in mid. Oh, man, he's going to find the gravity field stun as well. Demonfly charged up. Tally is getting the healing he's back, healing him firing back. out the Sith's hand. Here comes Razork. Sonic's wave as well as the resonating strike. Pick themselves up the kill. The tower was secured. And I think that may be one of the biggest caster curses of the day. I was just praising the first 15 minutes of Chief, and then this happened. But I actually like that game plan because look at the vision. I was about to highlight it as well. Fnatic really get a bigger force. Oh, oh we're right up. back in. That's a goodbye, Humanade. You didn't get a chance to breathe. No, that's perfectly fine. I'm here, Freud. In my opinion, some of the games earlier today, a bit too stale. I'd like some more action in there. So Chiefs and Fnatic really delivering. But with Humanoid now going down, despite having that teleport, that should mean that the Rift Hell should go over to Chief instead. I mean, really, really great highlight here from our graphics and stats team. Upset 301 on that Callista. He has been the late game insurance Crazy. for a Fnatic as Rux is going to use that Spider Nautilus to dredge line to the wall. Tupun stepping forward, throws out the needlework as well as the second, and the Herald was secured. The thing I want to ask, as now we're moving into the stage of the game, 2,000 gold up, in terms of team fighting, it feels as though Fnatic's comp is a little more straightforward to my eyes in this one. Yeah, but it's also the intricacies, how they work against each other at the same time, right? Because, like, even if you burst the Gwen down a little bit, she's yeah, going to heal it up a little bit. She's going to be immune at, at, at the same time. You're going to have a Braum that can kind of facilitate you. It's going to be very extended team fights. Healing reductions in this game is going to matter a lot. And so far, it's not been picked up yet. Okay, let's take a, keep an eye then on if that itemization is secured. And I think for Chiefs, I really want to see their positioning in team fights. Because if Maokai, Victor, and Nautilus press R, Chiefs members are going to die. Tally's trying to use that death hand, but Humor and Wanda literally just stunned. The amount of CC is, as an Australian caster would say, disgusting. You gotta love the tree. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Really I mean, you definitely love it. Love I tree. love that tree. Now, on the top side, holding my breath for a moment. If they wanted to get aggressive, they're not so far. Vision is spotted by Arthur, and they're going to continue the play. They do have that Rift Tail as well. And despite it being flatting in a 2k gold lead right now, that can swing so quickly. If you get one pick on the top side, if you're playing on the top side, you get two turrets with the Rift Tail, it, it, it's back to be dead even. What do you think about scaling options here? When you look at the fact Tristana, the Gwen, 
I think they're great. Honestly, I, I think they're super great to, to still have it. And I think even raid the Tristana into, into the Callista where it's going to favor the Tristana. Remember, you get scaling range in the game. Yeah. The later you get into this game stylistically between the two champions, you become better into the Callista. And, and at the same time at that, you also just have super good peeling once again with the bomb. Yeah. I think that's going to be crucial. But you can always just have them as they run into each other, five versus five, and see what happens. But League of Legends is a more in-depth game. Finding pick potential with the Nautilus, have, just sending rocks in there, pulling them out with the Fape's Cold. There is a lot of small things that can happen that can decide the fight. And we've seen it a lot today, even just like going back to the EG game, like Vulcan just flashing in, not having that flash. That was almost the entire game going there. I mean, I think it's the crowd control is going to be so crucial, really for both sides. Um, if Upset is allowed to use that martial poise to hop, skip, and jump around, um, can run amok on several members of the Chiefs roster. And then similarly, for Rays, if he can use the rocket jump and a buster shot to reposition, they've got the tools. I mean, Chiefs, 20 minutes in, they're only down 2k gold. Eight kills to four is a little bit concerning because the uh, Rage Blade is already secured for upset, so he's basically half an item ahead. Exactly, and, and the only one still at two items on the side of Chief, that is actually Arthur that we've been talking about. But it's looked like Chief, they just want to cross map a potential Drake, but Fnatic sees them up there, so they're not going to move down towards the bot lane. They're going to contest them. Flash, fight, already the kill onto Arthur. Fnatic throw a lot at that, but it will give them the control. The mid wave is being pushed in, and Raze is trying to catch that one out. But there's no hesitation here from Fnatic. Rux leading the charge, and the squad following it. Yeah, they can still try and go on Raze if they want to. Sonic, Sonic Wave connects. Wave. Not going to find the Tempest Cripple to do a lot more. That Dragon's Rage was already used just a moment or two earlier. But remember, the kill onto Arthur allows the pressure mid, that allows him to get the tower, that allows him to get to the dragon. And yeah, it's one of the things that's just really nice to see because obviously you could go for a player that's just, oh, it's a free Drake, let them just do whatever they want to top. But what Fnatic does instead is that they adapt their game plan. They attack the top side where Chief is trying to get aggressive, they find the kill, then they get mid lane through. Humanoid even picks up the enemy Raptors, and then they get the Drake. It's not just finding one thing, it's finding multiple things, then leading to the neutral objective, and that's how they find themselves in a 3k gold lead now. I mean, really good position for Fnatic. They've already picked up that win against Evil Geniuses earlier today. This is obviously Chief's debut game, this world. Uh, wondering what you think thus far. The early game, we didn't see the impact. We weren't expecting Chiefs to perform the way they did in the LCO against Fnatic, right? But they are definitely showing they can move around the map, they can set up the kills they want. Unfortunately, one or two team fights have gone the way they don't want to. Give them time. They'll get Give them time. I, I believe in them. Um, Rift Isle, second Rift Isle has been deployed. Unfortunately, not like they really wanted to. You're not yeah. gonna get two turrets with this one. I'm not even sure you're gonna get one um, as it does go down. Rasok needs to be careful if this connects because if you look at the minimap, it's still a lot of chief members on the bot side. And I think Humanoid is going to be aware of that in just a little bit. Looking at the teleports. Wonders got his up if he were to join. But the duo for Fnatic's in that mid lane continuing to shove forward. I want to just draw attention once again. Humanoid 228 CS to the 156 of Tally. This Swain that was picked uh, in on that second phase. Unfortunately, having a, a tough time. And remember, the swim was picked into the victor as well. Yeah. And I know we've spoken a little bit about the individual player and the impact, but this is going to be a tough game for this drain tank to be able to do what Chiefs need him to do. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, he's still going to be in a position where when you hit that level 16, the amount of healing you're going to have coming out is going to be quite annoying to deal with. But I will say there's a few good power item spikes coming through from the side of Fnatic. Fimble Winter has just been completed yeah. and stacked by Wunder. Healing reduction with the sword coming, chainsaw coming out from Brassock as well has been deployed. So this is where, like, if you start fighting now and Chiefs is this far behind the curve, it's just going to be very Fnatic dominated. So I think from the side of Chiefs, if you want to stay in this game, this is where you have to get creative. This is where you have to find ways of winning the game. Game that's not just from 5v5. And what is that then? Well, you're looking towards your side lane, maybe, yeah. with Tapoon on the Gwen as well, because isolated, he still does wonders. The only thing that would really suck for Chief <laughs> is if Fnatic gets the Barry now. Oh man, I'm clinching. It's Fnatic. They, they do have the rend. They do have the resonating strike. They do have that smite inside the pit. Baron's down to 5,000. The calls to peel. Dredge line won't catch, but the nature's grasp does. Locks down one. Everyone else gets hand behind. Tower secure in the bottom lane as that split push is on. But is it at the cost of the fight? Tapoon's trying to run a mic and upset. He's chucking out spear after spear. 
The bloodline is doing so much work as Tal has escaped and Tapoon has been pushed away. Human with the advantage, he's built up Death Ray Siphon Power. The auto attack secures it. Three kills for Fnatic at the cost of Wonder's life and the pill back to the pit. They're going to go straight back to the Baron, but Arthur's still around. He does have that smite, he does have that flash as well, and he does have the mobility in the grave. This is not 50 for Chiefs, but Fnatic, they have to force him out of the pit. This is not a 50 50 with the Rand and the smite. The advantage is for Fnatic and Arthur has been forced to flash to safety. There are so many stacks on that Baron. All of a sudden, Fnatic jump right back into the pit. Arthur's not going to risk this. Baron secured. The ability to play side lanes has now been mitigated. And Fnatic once again showing decisive play. They peeled from the Baron, they won the fight, they got the objective after. Exactly. Valiant effort by Arthur, but even better. And pressure coming out from Fnatic as well, just forcing him away from the pit. And you can see straight up what the call is from Fnatic. They know to get the teleport. They want to turn immediately with the Malfoy. Once again, great point to have the tree in if you just want to turn on them with the ultimate. And they just split up the fight completely. Tapoon is doing a lot of damage on the back line, but it's nothing compared to what the Fnatic members are able to do to Tally and the rest of them also raise going down there. And then Humanoid. What standout player he's been today. Oh, such a great performance. Um, really, really well played. The lead that he's generated is great. And considering how much you love Maokai, I wonder if anybody, if anybody out there is going to be willing to Photoshop um, Schoolboy Goldberg in your outfit today. Next School to Maokai, Goldberg. Do you know? Do you know the the Whomping Willow from Harry Potter? Do you know it's the name of the yeah, tree, right? Yeah. yeah. So. I'm imagining the Whomping Willow as Maokai, yes. and you're just standing underneath it next to it. Because you've got a lovely, like, just gone to primary school look, your little tie is really pretty, and yeah, I just think it'll be really fun, because you're such a fan of the tree. Yeah, you know who you are? You're like first movie Neville. That's like <laughs> who I'm seeing right here coming through now. In the game as well, Fnatic getting aggressive with the Baron buff on the top side instead, pushing down on the tier two turrets. And right now, not the biggest response are coming through. Tapoon's trying to handshake what he can, on the opposite side of the map, but let's be real, you're in a 7k deficit here, fighting Fnatic straight on when they have the Baron, it's going to be very difficult. I think the best silver lining you have now as Chiefs is the fact that these drakes were taken very late. You don't really have too many drakes stacked up, and giving over one Infernal to Fnatic here, it's not really going to break the game. No, it's not, and I think crucially here, when you start to zoom out a little bit, we're in game five of the first day. This is, you know, single, uh, uh, BO1, single round Robin. And for Fnatic, in the advantageous position they've built, they still have to close this game out. They've been in a position where they could be 2-0 on a day where they had to play with a substitute. It's a great start for Fnatic. They will secure themselves this second Drake, the Mountain and the Infernal. They've got four towers to the end. Their gold lead is up to 7,000. You're starting to see two, three items across the board. We're starting to see some healing reduction built into the inventories as well. And that Baron buff. I mean, all the tools are available to Fnatic to win this game, so it's their game to lose at this point. Oh, 100%. As Chiefs right now, you're just saying give, 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 and, and defend whatever we can, but don't overforce the issue. You need three items on the Tristana. If you're lucky enough to get it, three items on the Swain, too, that's probably not gonna be the situation. You're looking at Arthur, really, to try and finish up that LDR, at least to try and find some extra damage to shred through some of the frontliners that there is, but as you say yourself, this is really Fnatic's game to lose at this point. And look at the structures, look at the jungle. They take away everything right Plus now. Plus 5,000 gold on the Red Bull Baron power play. I mean, that is phenomenal. Another tower being focused down. I'm going to be able to secure it just yet. Tapoon is being pushed away from Humanoid. I've noticed the last few engages, Humanoid is just hunting that Gwyn. He's looking to push him out. Five, two, and two. Three and a half items complete and seven stacks on that seal and like Tapu cannot find a flank opportunity, he cannot get into the fight because Humanoids are waiting to push him out. It's one of those things as well in the matchup is the sooner you can bait out the hollowed mist and just disengage yeah. and then start the fight. That That's really how you want to play that matchup as Humanoid and having first strike as well in this instance where there's not a lot of people who's able to touch you. Look at the amount of damage he's busting out even oh, through the bomb. man, that gravity field was so close to landing. Tower's fallen, pushing the top wave as well, the bottom lane doing a whole lot for now as Tally's going to get some damage back, but one that doesn't give a damn. Two level advantage already. I mean, Tally's level 14 uh, to Humanoid 16. Tapoon 15 to Wonder 16. Everything is just going up. Plus 10k gold. And we're now looking to see how Fnatic just knock over those final structures. For Chiefs, it's been a interesting start. The first game kind of playing out somewhat as we were expecting. Yeah. And I do think you want to give some credit to how they try to set up those plays on the side lanes, but unfortunately, 
Tally just got bullied and beaten up a lot, and Humanoid, as well as Upset, took over. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where there will just be a skill discrepancy yeah. hands every now and then, and that's just a talking point, but let's see if they can shut down their skill discrepancy with Humanoid on a side lane. Let's find out. Infamous comes forward. in here. Humanoid has done nothing but walk away. Wasn't able to be held down at all. Tally and Sapoon down to 50% HP. Fnatic, do they want to cut them off? How bold are they feeling? One just got teleport. Level 17 pushing the top lane. Two members of Fnatic were inside that red buff area, but the minion wave wasn't there, so Upsets brought this along, and it's just pressure for days. I mean, put yourselves in Chief's shoes. They have been fending off a Fnatic offensive for what feels like eight straight minutes. They're holding on for now, but the question is, how much further can you hold on? Wonder dives on the turret. Mm, the Nature's Gross comes out, roots up one or two. Wonder's going low, while the dog jumps forward. Sapoon does two. No needlework available to him as he used that in the bottom lane engage. Humanoid's been exhausted, forced to flash for his life. The engage comes out, and Tally is dead. Add one to Fnatic's Tally. A fantastic two. fate call. Secured, upset oh. with the triple, with the quadra, looking for the pentakill. Not going to find it just yet. Sapoon's Golden! And that's the pentakill! pentakill. <laughs> We're in Mexico! Offset gets a pentakill! What a fantastic finish for Fnatic! Upset picks up the fifth and final kill. Hibbert starts to be taken down, and the death timers are too high. The minions are too plentiful. And Fnatic will look to go 2 and 0 on the day with a substitute in emphatic fashion. Fnatic will take down Chiefs. All right, taking its time. Give it a moment. And there it is. You can see it on reaction coming through from Upset as well. Fnatic starting out with a 2 0. And despite all the issues they've had, all the questions about this roster leading into the World Championship on the first day, they shot all the doubters up. I mean, it's a really, really fantastic start when you consider the rest of the teams in the group beyond gaming. Detonation Focus Me and Loud. After seeing today's games, one.